Hello everybody, this is Steve Rizzetti, co-founder of MoviePix.com and author of the MoviePix.com Guide to Adobe Premiere Elements as well as the MoviePix.com Guide to Adobe Photoshop Elements. And here we are in Premiere Elements at the welcome screen in the first of our eight-part series we're calling Basic Training with Premiere Elements. We're going to show you the basics of how to use the program to create a project from beginning to end. Whenever you launch Premiere Elements or Photoshop Elements for that matter, you get the hub screen here. From this hub screen, you have access to a number of inspirational articles and tutorials. What's new? Try this. Inspiration. As well as a quick search for pretty much any subject you want to know more about. You want to know how to add titles, you want to know how to add transitions, just type it up there in the box and you can put that in plain English or you can use keywords and it will link you directly to articles showing you how to do that or even tutorials showing you how to do that. Down in the lower left are auto creations. These will populate as you continue to use the program. The program is going to be continually searching through your hard drive for media files and generating slideshows, generating video collages or photo collages, generating sometimes special effects like color pop or the blur effect or the painterly effect and then giving you works in progress there so you can tap on the auto creations that it creates and it will automatically open the appropriate program and you can continue to build those out in the lower right are buttons of course for launching each of the elements programs as well as recent files we are going to launch the video editor premiere elements now by default when you launch premiere elements you get this option screen which gives you the option for either editing a video clip or going into a quick view project. I think this screen is pretty useless. If you do too, you can check this box. Don't show it again and click close and it opens into quick view. Most of these tutorials that we'll be doing basic training with will be doing in expert view. Expert view is much more powerful. It's much more like a professional editing workspace, but quick view is great for quickly assembling short movies or just editing your clips on an easy timeline. You can see the timeline only has one video and audio track. So all of your media has to go on this one track. You can't stack tracks on top of each other. And there are even limitations with regard to titles. We'll look at that in just a moment, but let's just add some media so I'm going to click the add media button select files and folders and we're just going to grab some random clips here I'm holding down the shift key to grab the first and the last in the series and click open and those clips are then added directly to the timeline now when you're in expert view any media files you add go to a project assets panel and then you add them to the timeline as you build out your movie in quick view the files are added directly to the timeline. You can see that uh, although I call this a timeline, it actually is more of a scene line. You see little thumbnails representing each of the video clips. The only indication of how long each clip is, is the little indicator here on the lower left of each clip. Uh, I'm going to click off these because you, they're all selected now. I'm going to click off these by clicking on the timeline and now I can select individual clips and I can arrange the order of them just by dragging them along. I can also add titles to any clip and you see if I select a clip I get this little T plus button that appears above the clip and when I click on that the title adjustments area opens up and we talk more about title adjustments and how to add and modify your titles later in the course but for now we're just going to add a simple title to our movie now notice that the title is linked to the clip itself. So I can't have a title extending over several clips. I can't reposition the title. It is locked to the clip. I do have some control. If I click on the little stopwatch here, I can control where in the clip this title comes in. So this is a 23 second long video clip. I can have it come in 10 seconds into the clip and I can control how long it is. I also have some options over here on the right for adding fade in or fade out to the title as well as to the clips itself but not a lot of control over the titles, not nearly as many as you have in expert view. If my clip is too long, if I select a clip, I can click on the little button in the lower right hand corner and that opens up the smart trim area. In smart trim, we can select any or all of the clip or several segments of a longer clip. And instead of getting say, for instance, the entire 23 second clip, now I'm only using 14 seconds of it. So you do have a certain amount of control in trimming the clip. You also have the option for adding transitions. And if you go over here to the transitions menu, that's on the toolbar that runs along the right hand side of the program. You see you have a number of transition options, not a lot. Got about 16 of them here. In expert view, you're going to have 16 categories of transitions, close to 100 transitions. So again, 
expert view much more powerful, but in quick view, again, we do have options for adding some basic transitions between clips and then modifying the transitions for our particular needs. And we talk more about modifying transitions later in this course. So quick view is designed primarily to work with a single track of video and audio, but let's go over to expert view, which is the much more powerful of the two editing spaces. And you notice when we do go to expert view, we get a little warning that says, you can go to expert view, but you may not be able to come back because expert view is a much more powerful, much more professional workspace and things that you add here in expert view may not be available when you go back to quick view. Now in our next session, we're going to look at how to add media, whether it's media that's already on your hard drive or media that's coming from a camcorder. And then later in the course, we're going to look at how to do some more professional editing and special effects and finally generate our movie from our movie project. See you in part two.